So the final speaker for the session today will be Blake Riggs. All right. Um, again, love to thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak today. And um, I do have to confess, I was a little nervous getting up here and speaking, but one of my colleagues told me, um, well, it's Saturday afternoon. No one's going to be there anyway. They'll be all at Disney World. <laughs> so, but, so I give you a thank you as well for um, staying strong here in the meeting. Um, the question I really want to address here is I, what I would say one of the most fundamental questions in cell biology is really how do we go from a basic unit of the cell into all the variety of shapes that we see in a living organism. So if we look at this classic cartoon for the National Academies, we can illustrate this point of this basic unit that we see early on that now will transition into the variety of shapes that we see in the organism. And if we focus here on the um, neuron, all right, um, we've learned a lot about the neuron, especially from work in Drosophila. So this image here from the um, Christo lab, and if anyone's out in the Christo lab, thank you. Um, cell differentiation happens through an unequal partitioning or an asymmetric division where one cell is getting more cell fate determinants than another cell. And two things we do know about this is first that um, establishment of cell polarity is crucial for asymmetric cell divisions. And secondly, that the, um, there's a slew of proteins known as the PAR proteins that are essential for this um, establishment of cell fate. Now, um, and then shown in this image here, you can see how these PAR proteins can be distributed to um, opposite ends of the cell during mitosis. Shown in blue is the um, tight junction um, bazooka, and shown in red is the transcription factor Prospero that are found in neuroblasts going through an asymmetric division. Now, major questions are, of course, how are cell fate determinants partitioned asymmetrically, or how do they localize asymmetrically in mitosis? And um, more importantly is, and how and precisely when are these cell fate determinants distributed in mitosis prior to these divisions? What's the signal that now sets up an asymmetric division? So um, I want to impress on you that I think a good place to look at this is in the early embryo. Now, thanks to one of our speakers, Todd, he already introduced the syncytial divisions. And, it's kind of odd, but Drosophila divide and syncytium in the nucleus, and they migrate about cycle nine to the cortex, where they go through three rounds of division before they're encapsulated, these nuclei are encapsulated into a cell to form that basic unit I spoke of. And this happens at a prolonged interphase of the 14th cycle. And this is known as cellular blastoderm formation or cellularization. And this takes about an hour. And then after that, and to give kind of a homage to um, some of the pioneering work, uh, we do know that there's a big change between maternal transcripts and zygotic transcripts known as the mid-blastula transition. This is also at the start of gastrulation. But the um, fly does something really odd in that it has an asynchronous mitosis 14. And again, this is great work by um, one of the pioneers, Victoria Foe. And I always say if there was scientist trading cards, I would she would be in my top collection. Um, but she painstakingly mapped out each of the domains that divided um, during mitosis 14, and they're numbered um, according to when they um, divide. And you can see one will go first. On the ventral side, you have two, three, four, so on and so forth. And these now will make up the um, body plan of the adult fly. So we really started looking into this question, not necessarily to answer questions of asymmetric cell division, but to ask a, a basic question. And this is a question that asks, is the endoplasmic reticulum inherited during cell division? Now, in this audience, I don't have to tell you about the endoplasmic reticulum, but there is a major question of organelle inheritance. And um, work from my lab and other labs have outline that the endoplasmic reticulum goes through a dramatic reorganization in both its structure and localization during mitosis. And shown here, and this is in syncytium, uh, we see that the ER starts to localize around the nuclear envelope as we enter into prophase. And at prometaphase, when the nuclear envelope breaks down, 
it transitions to the perispindle region and accumulates at the spindle poles. This persists through anaphase, and at telophase, it starts to reform again into its interphase-like conformation. There's also a bit that shows up at the midbody as well. But um, if we want to study these um, inheritance questions, the syncytium, why I love the syncytium, it's not the best place. We wanted to look at an actual cell division. Well, the first cell division is that domain one that happens at the 14th mitosis. It's the first cell division in uh, Drosophila development. So we started looking there, and I asked my student to check this out and really ask a basic question. If we divide the cell in two, we measure uh, fluorescence intensity along the metaphase plate at either end. Um, are, we now getting, uh, are we now getting equal separation of the ER? And can we measure this and set this as a baseline for future studies? So my student comes back to me and says, I saw something really odd. And you, you kind of love it when students come to you and say, I saw something really odd, because that means it's really cool. Um, but he says, you know, I, I really see something odd that the ER is not moving correctly. And, um, and shown here, and the, the ER is in green and um, DNA is in red, he saw what he said was a, a unequal partitioning of the ER. Sorry, let me roll, scroll down here. And you can watch this movie and you can see that the e one daughter cell is getting more ER than the other. And this is in that domain one, in that little patch of cells. Now, this is not all of the cells in domain one, but about, we've calculated about 17% of the cells will um, display an asymmetric um, partitioning of the ER. Um, and we all checked a couple of markers. Um, we, this is, our first marker was PDI, protein disulfide isomerase, that's found in the lumen. We also looked at reticulon one, which was just spoken about. Um, which is um, found on the surface, and we see this equal or, equal, unequal partitioning in both markers. And we can quantitate this, and again, indeed, one cell is getting more ER than the other. And of course, being kind of paranoid about this, because this is weird, I asked them to check the other domains, like check domain 11 and check 4, and, and this domain was the only one we saw where we're getting this unequal partitioning. Now, it's important to stress, not all domains can be viewed because of the movement of the cells in, um, in the different planes. So what is domain one? Well, um, because it is mid-blasto transition and there's really a lack of markers that we can use, um, I turned to the literature and work from Gerhard uh, Technow's lab and he painstakingly mapped out the cell fate of all the um, neuroblasts that are developed in Drosophila. And it turns out domain one here gives rise to the anterior portion of the Drosophila adult brain. And shown here in green is domain one. And down below here are all the different neuroblasts that are developed in domain one. So we can think of domain one as a pro, pro neuronal cells. So, in, in hypothesizing, well, what could be doing this? We started to look in the literature again, and we turned to a protein, um, or a target that we wanted to look at known as jagonal. One of the reasons is, is that jagonal um, is an ER-associated protein, also associates with the cortex, and we hypothesize that if you're gonna be partitioning the ER, you're gonna do this um, by a connection with the cortex. And, what we know about jagonal, it actually came from a collection in Ruth Lehman's lab that was looking at oogenesis. Um, it's Korean for small egg, and it's highly conserved from yeast to humans. Um, N terminus, not known, um, but contains a dilysine motif, which is involved in ER retention, specifically COP1 retention. And it's required for growth and localization of Drosophila oocyte, and this was outlined in Lynn Cooley's lab. And just to quickly show you this, um, in, the, in oogenesis, you get a, a clustering of the ER along the cortex of the developing egg. And if you look at jagonal mutants, um, that clustering does not occur and you get a smaller egg. So in order to look at this, I, of course, before I hit up Lynn Cooley for some um, stocks, I wanted to get some preliminary data. So we took this um, opportunity, we made double-stranded RNA 
and um, actually took the advantage of cellularization because it is an hour long. We injected the double-stranded RNA, and we hypothesized that when we inject this double-stranded RNA, it will now get encapsulated into each cell and then knock down um, jagonal, and we would look at the effects in domain one. And then when we knock down jagonal, we saw a couple of things. First of all, we see that um, there's no, um, now that ER is dividing symmetrically. And secondly, there's a prolonged delay in mitosis. And one here is gonna try to divide asymmetrically and it's gonna snap back. So we can now get a symmetrical partitioning of the ER. And also we can measure this um, with our fluorescence intensity and we see, again, uh, symmetrical partitioning. In measuring mitosis, this also gives us a significant delay in mitosis, notably from prometaphase to metaphase, where we see the cells are um, a bit arrested before they would finally complete mitosis. Now, in looking, um, again, thanks to Lynn Cooley, she did provide the stocks once um, I asked her, and we were able to look at localization of jagonal. And in those um, cells, we see jagonal is localized, um, localized all around the um, cell um, cortex. As we enter into prometaphase and into metaphase, it's partitioned, starts to be partitioned asymmetrically, with one daughter cell getting more jagonal than the other. Now, also, and I'm hypothesizing here, but uh, we believe that this cell getting jagonal also is the eventual cell that's going to become the neuroblast because of the positioning of the nuclei as it's slightly lower than the other nuclei. And this is because that in order to develop a neuroblast, the neuroblasts delaminate from the epithelium to align along the apical basal axis to now go through an asymmetric division where it now provides a GMC and a renewing neuroblast. So a question is, do we have defects now in, in neuroblast divisions, in those asymmetric divisions? So uh, we looked at the alignment, the apical basal alignment, um, and typical defects are spindle rotation defects along this apical basal alignment in that asymmetric division after, um, after um, delamination. And shown here, you can see that you have your apical marker and we have an alignment of the spindle along the apical basal axis. If we look at jagonal, we see a pleiotropy of defects where the alignment is sometimes will be aligned a, um, apical basal or even be perpendicular to the apical basal axis. This here is at a 45 degrees angle. And also, we measured that angle of incidence along the apical basal axis. And in jagonal mutants, we see a spread of um, spindle rotation defects, indicating that there are defects involved in um, alignment and rotation. So just to summarize, um, I told you that DER divides asymmetrically in proneuronal cells, that um, this relies on the transmembrane protein jagonal. Um, jagonal mutants to play defects in apical basal spindle orientation um, in those Drosophila neuroblasts as well, and jagonals partition asymmetrically. Now, um, one cool thing, especially with this meeting and model organisms and disease, um, a paper came out a couple of um, years ago that linked the human jagonal with a condition um, in congenital neutropenia. I'm not that kind of doctor, but um, this means that, um, I had to look this up, but this means that it's, um, there's a problem in the development of the white blood cells, so you're more prone to infections. And they did tap tagging of jagonal, and they showed that there's, um, the N-terminus is binding to the COP1 quote, and interestingly enough that there are several incidences where jagonal binds to tubulin itself. So kind of, instead of giving you a laundry list of future directions, I just wanna show you a model on my last slide here um, of questions we wanna answer in no particular order. But first is, does ER vesicle transport, um, vesicle um, recycling play a role now in, um, cell fate selection. Secondly, is jagonal playing more of a complex localization at the cortex where it's stabilizing spindle rotation effects similar to um, some other proteins like inscutable? Or lastly, is jagonal playing a role in centrosome stability in the aster 
um, localization, the connections. Um, if you, of course, may have defects and aster localization or the um, mitotic spindle, then rotation would be affected as well. So with that, um, I'd like to thank uh, my lab and the people who did the work. Um, I, I am a firm believer of not only doing good science, but also training the next generation of science, as you can see. I got a little too many students. Um, but Anthony Uritano, who's now at the Riken, did the majority of this work, and also um, Arturo um, Atamirano. He's um, starting his PhD program in, um, at UC San Diego in a month or so. Um, and this work was done largely by master's students as well. So with that, I'd love to take questions, if I can, maybe. <laughs> Can I ask a question? I think your oh, sorry. I think your model slide may answer this. But did you look at the um, micro, the distribution of microtubules or the distribution of the you know, anything like? that? And is the, right, and is the right. cell division asymmetric at all? Yeah. In, in so, domain um, one. So it's one of the major things we have to look at now um, is the actual organization of the microtubule network at mitosis. Um, that. Um, those divisions at the 14th mitosis are not asymmetric. And that's been shown, um, not by me, but by several developmental biologists, um, because these are planar in nature. And again, these have not adopted a cell fate yet. So these are symmetric, but the ER is dividing asymmetrically. Do you have a clue what actually makes the diagonal asymmetric? Um, no, that's a great, great question. Um, no, some ideas we can go with, I think we're looking at um, if um, Jaguar now is associating with other factors. Um, namely, I love the COP1 story because it does link to this vesicle recycling um, and binding to microtubules. So um, one thing that I, I, I think is really cool, especially seen at this meeting, is the idea of um, tubulin modifications that could be playing a role in this. So maybe it's localizing to uh, polyglutamated microtubules, something like that. That's something we would like to explore as well. So do you know if the ER is going with the older centrosome, like the mother <laughs> the centrosome daughter. versus the daughter? Yeah, yeah, no. Um, I, actually, I just got a centrobin line in to start looking at that. Now, centrobin and mitosis, you're going to have both mother and daughter but we're gonna to try to use um, a photoconvertible form of this to really answer that question. I think it's a cool question as well. So I have a comment and a question. Um, the comment is, have you actually considered that the uh, KKXX motif is just a retention signal rather than really a trafficking signal? The, the dialysing motif? Yeah, the dialysing motif, um, <laughs> No, I hadn't thought about that. Um, no, it's, it's quite possible. I think. Um, it could be a trafficking signal. The interesting thing, though, is that the COP from the human data, the COP, N terminus is binding the COP1 coat, not necessarily um, the C terminus where the retention signal is. That would be the only thing I could think that could kind of parse out that question. But um, I'm not sure I should look into that more. That'd be a good way to figure out a model. And, uh, and the other thing is, did you actually look at ER plasma membrane contact sites? Um, ER plasma membrane contacts. No, no. Let me write that down. That's good. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much to all of our speakers. It was a great session, and I hope everybody has a great rest of your afternoon.